If we look at the nature of electrical load, we can classify them into three types. In this video, you will understand these three types of electrical load in detail. Also, in the end of this video, I will talk about one of the very common misconception about a particular type of load. So to understand the types of electrical load, you need to watch the video. Hello and welcome back on my channel. My name is Gaurav J. I post videos related to electrical engineering with easiest explanation on this channel. So if you're interested in learning electrical engineering in easiest way, make sure you click on the subscribe button and the bell icon. Before you understand the different types of electrical load, it is important that you understand the three different powers that is active power, reactive power and apparent power. And hence I will recommend you to watch my video on that first the link for which is given in the description of this video. Understand those power and then come back here as that will make things even more easy to understand. Already done watching that video? Then let's start. First, let's understand what is electrical load. In the easiest language, anything that consumes electrical power is called as electrical load. So that includes light bulb, computers, refrigerator, etc. All these consumes electric power and hence we can refer them as electric load. Now if we look at the nature of such load, we can actually categorize them in three different types and those are resistive load, inductive load and capacitive load. In this video, I am going to talk about these three loads. Now there can be other types also. For example, if you are working in a power distribution company, you can say we also have industrial load, residential load, commercial load, etc. We are not going to talk about those load in this video. We are only going to talk about the basics that is resistive, inductive and capacitive loads. Let's first understand the resistive load. Load which consumes only active power is called as a resistive load. And if you look at the voltage and current waveforms of such load, you will find that the voltage and current are perfectly in phase with each other. Now, when I say they are perfectly in phase, that means both the waveforms reaches their peak value at the same time. They also reaches the zero value at the same time. One example you can see on your screen. As such type of load only consumes active power, power flows from source to load only. So for instance, this is the AC source connected to a resistive load. Now in this case, power will only flow from source G to load L. There will be no power flowing from load to source. Yes, in few cases, power also flows from load to source, which I have explained in my active, reactive and apparent power video. As such loads only consumes active power, power factor of such loads is unity and which is a very good sign. If you want to know more about power factor in detail, you can watch my complete playlist on that link for which you will find in the description of this video. Now let's look at the examples of resistive load. Lights, heaters or any other load that consists of only heating element. Those are the examples of resistive load. Let's see what are the properties of resistive load. These loads consumes only active power. Voltage and current waveform of such loads are perfectly in phase with each other. Power factor of such load is unity. Power always flow from source to load. You can take screenshot of this slide for your quick reference. Now let's understand inductive load. Load which consumes only reactive power is called as inductive load. And if you look at the voltage and current waveform of such load, you will find that the voltage and current are out of phase with each other by 90 degree. Now, when I say they are out of phase, that means both the waveforms reaches their peak value at different times. They also reaches the zero value at different times. One example you can see on your screen. If you look at the waveform, you will find that voltage has head start than the current. We can also say current is lagging behind the voltage. As such type of load only consumes reactive power, power can flow from source to load or even load to source. Further, power factor of such loads is not unity. Power factor of such loads is lagging in nature. Let's see a few examples of inductive load. Electric motor, fans, washing machines or anything that has a motor inside it. 
Also, reactors used in power system is an example of inductive load. If you know few more examples of inductive load, do let us know via comments. Let's see what are the properties of inductive load. These loads consumes only reactive power. Voltage and current waveform of such loads are out of phase with each other by 90 degree. Power factor of such load is lagging. Power flows from source to load and load to source. You can take screenshot of this slide for your quick reference. This type of loads are not easy loads as the resistive loads. They create a lot of problem in the system, but of course they are equally important. Since current lags behind the voltage by 90 degree in such type of loads that make switching of such load difficult. As we know, circuit breaker opens at current zero condition. If you look at the current and voltage waveform of such load, you will find that when current is zero, voltage is maximum. And hence when circuit breaker opens at current zero voltage across the breaker contacts is maximum. Whereas in case of resistive load, both current and voltage become zero at the same time. Therefore switching such type of inductive load is one of the critical operation. Such type of load also affects the power factor of system heavily and hence electricity bill goes up. Capacitive load is similar to that of inductive load. In capacitive loads also, Current and voltage are out of phase with each other. The only difference is that in capacitive load, current leads the voltage by 90 degree. Whereas in inductive load, current lags behind the voltage by 90 degree. Now let's talk about the misconception on which I spoke in the beginning of this video. Basically, capacitive load do not exist in standalone format. Capacitor banks are installed to improve the power factor of a load or system. Their job is to supply the reactive power. Therefore, we cannot call capacitor banks as capacitive load. Because load is something that absorbs the power. I have seen in many places on the internet, people are calling capacitor bank as capacitive load. Well, I think capacitor bank supplies reactive power and hence it cannot be classified as capacitive load. For instance, let's say I have a 230 volt AC generator and a capacitor bank connected to it. Reactance of capacitor bank is 23 ohms. Therefore, the current drawn by the system would be, let's say, 10 ampere. Now, if you connect a VAR meter, which is used to calculate the reactive power in between generator and capacitor bank, it will give a negative reading. Negative 2300 VAR or 2.3 kVAR is the reading shown by the uh, VAR meter. So this negative reading indicates that the power is actually flowing from capacitor bank to the generator. And hence we cannot call capacitor bank as capacitive load. Basically there is no such thing which you can classify as capacitive load. Let me know what is your thought on this. Will you call capacitor bank as capacitive load? Comment your thought on this. It would be an interesting topic to discuss. So this is all about the basic types of electrical load. This topic was requested by one of my subscribers. I hope you learned something new today. If the answer is yes, do like the video and don't forget to subscribe to my channel so that you will not miss the future updates. That's all for this video guys. I'll see you in my next one. But till then, keep watching, keep learning.